We now move to uh, session six, which is the session um, dedicated to social enterprise Thailand initiatives. So over to Pang. Thank you. Thank you so much, Goma. May I stand a little bit? So adika. <laughs> so adika, everyone. So uh, thank you for your time and thank you for having SE Thailand as part of the event. Uh, so I will sit down <laughs> now. Um, in our session today, we have in total of five panelists. But you are meeting only four here because there is one person, very special one. He just got COVID. That's why he will be joining uh, from the Zoom session instead. Uh huh. Okay. So, uh, why are you laughing? Peace with it. Sawadika. Yeah, that, that's the one. Suni Chetan. So let me go to the objective of this session first. I, I believe you all know the name, the topic of the session already, but I, I just would like to recap a little bit. Actually, in this session, we would like to bring you to see how it is in Thailand in terms of the social enterprise now in the e ecosystem. What, what is happening? Who are the key players that you are going to meet and hear the story from them? That is the first objective. The second objective is for you to gain some perspectives from them as well, because we all have five persons here. They are from social enterprises. We are from association, research institute, and several. You, you, you hear that story later on. So you gain some perspectives. And at the end of the session, uh, we would like to have the space for you. You can ask questions to every one of us here so we can learn from each other. If, if, if it is a purpose to collaborate, I think this is the right uh, session as well. Okay. So it's really an honor to have everyone here. I would like to start with uh, telling you the structure of the session first. In this next two hours together, we will separate uh, the session into two parts. The first part is the presentation part, where you will hear the story of each organization. We have a total of five organizations. So uh, each organization, we have the maximum of 15 minutes. That is the first part. And after the end of each presentation, please feel free to ask some of the questions to each of the speaker here. Okay. And the, the second part, it will be the panel discussion. I will have only three key questions to ask each of the panelists here. And then they can reply with their perspective. And after that, we can ask questions. Okay. Okay. So let's start with the first part. I will gradually introduce the speaker one by one when before they start the presentation. How is that? No. So let's start with the first person, the presentation from the SE Thailand first. Uh, the first panelist is Pita Chaidit Graysak. He's, he's the member and secretary of SE Thailand. That is the first role. He also the CEO and co-founder of one SE called Jasperi. Uh, Zesbury is a social enterprise that was established with a mission to help the Thai farmers with the problem of poverty. Mm -hmm. uh, Zesbury solves the problem of farmer, uh, farmer poverty through innovative organic products with a global appeal under the brand Jasperi. I think you will hear both the story about AC Thailand and about Jasperi from Neil. Could you please welcome Neil? Thank you. Hey, can you hear me? Hey, great. Um, so my name is Neil, and um, thank you for the introduction, Pang. I just found out that this is a two-hour um, session. Um, I thought it was half an hour, um, <laughs> but I'm going to keep this very short. I'm not presenting anything. Um, so I wear two hats here. The first hat is I'm the Secretary General and Board Member of Social Enterprise Thailand. So Social Enterprise Thailand was an organized so association that started really um, to be a home all the social entrepreneurs, you know, mission-driven organization in Thailand with the objective of creating sustainable and scalable impact over the country and hopefully the region and hopefully the world one day. So that's really why Social Enterprise Thailand was established. So our goal is to connect all different stakeholders in the ecosystem. Um, we are a nonprofit organization. And um, yeah, so basically that's uh, Social Enterprise Thailand, you know, Bang and her team will be here all day. Uh, so please come and talk to them. If you have an interest, whether you're a um, you know, funding organization, whether you're a you know, nonprofit that wants to tackle uh, social or environmental issues in Thailand. Um, so that's, that's really what Social Enterprise Thailand does. Can you um, forward to the second last slide? That's the end of the presentation. Uh, forward. 
over. Second last slide. Sorry, it's a technology here, so there's no clicker. <laughs> so we're gonna have to be manual about this. So, um, yeah, this slide. So basically, uh, you know, when we look at where we want to be as an organization, you have Social Enterprise UK, uh, which has created, you know, more than, I think more than 20,000 jobs, improved more than 10,000 lives, um, more than 100,000 social enterprises and has contributed 60 billion pounds to the UK GDP. So that's where uh, we see ourselves in, you know, five to 10 years uh, is to scale the impact again not just in thailand but in asean and eventually the world and we you know, basically operate as as a supporter of all these social driven uh, social enterprises um to allow them to support them what they need um to prosper and grow in a sustainable and scalable manner last slide Yeah, so basically come and connect with, with Ban. She's gonna be here all day and her team. Um, my second hat uh, is that I started a social enterprise myself called Jaspery. Started a long time ago. I don't wanna say how long, but um, we're working right now with over 12,000 farmers. We've helped them increase their income from just 40 cents to almost $6 a day and increase over 14 times. We are the only certified B Corp um, company in, in Thailand, uh, and we are being voted um, best for the world B Corp for three years in a row. Uh, we have a very strong, uh, I mean, social impact component, obviously, uh, which is audited every year. Uh, our brand, Jasbury, is uh, in two weeks, is going national in every Whole Foods store in the United States. So we in the really the growth um, stage and as I mentioned, I was actually looking for funding right now. So if anyone has, um, you know, strategic investor, uh, please come and talk to me. Uh, so yeah, that's my organization. And the goal for Jasper is um, to be like the Patagonia of food. That was my dream when I started the company. So hopefully I can do that over the next 10 years and become the Patagonia of food. Um, that's it for me. Thank you very much. Okay, sorry. Um, before I move on to the next speaker, would you like to ask some questions to Neil first? We can have like one or two minutes. It, it could be interactive session where we can talk and ask. Mm. Okay. Of course, please. I, I like the vision that you have, Patagonia of food, but you also do know that Patagonia has given away all their shares into a trust. Is that your goal? <laughs> yeah, they've given ninety nine percent of the roof, right? Uh, something like that. If my if my company is worth a billion dollar one day, I'm happy to give up ninety nine percent of it. Right, that's easy question. Please at the back. Okay, because um, Social Enterprise UK uh, is one of the model that is, has been very successful. And one of the key success of Social Enterprise UK is that they work with the public sector, with the government in particular. You know, one of the uh, examples that was used quite often in that model is they go to the government and they say, and did they list out all the social problems, right? Or environmental problems. And then they go, okay, you're spending 10 billion pounds a year on this issue. You're spending 5 billion pounds a year on this issue. So they go to them and say, we're going to save you some money, right? So the 5 billion you're spending on, well, one of the problem is, I think when people go into prison, for example, and they come out of prison, uh, they can't get a job because they're, they're being criminals in the past, right? So that costs the economy a lot of money. And most, uh, many of them go back into prison, right? So, so the government spend a huge amount of money on this problem every year. So the Social Enterprise UK go to them and say, look, we have some social entrepreneur that can solve this problem. They, they measure the rate, they can reduce the rate of the people coming out of prison and going back into prison. Mm -hmm. And if they reduce that by like 1%, 
it saves something like half a billion pounds a year for the government. So they say, look, if we can prove that we can do that, give us 10% of that. So give us 50 million pounds. And the government said, okay, if you can prove that you can do that, we'll give you money. So, so social enterprise UK has been successful in aligning the objective and working with the government to tackle social issue. Um, so, and that allows them to then support a lot of social enterprises. So I think that for social enterprise Thailand, we'll look at some of this example and say that this is something that if we can execute, not just in Thailand, but all over the world, because the government's job is not, not to start social enterprises. Right. It, it, in fact, you know, you could argue like there should be focus on policy and, and other things, whereas the social entrepreneur are the one on the ground. They're the one that understand the problem. They're the one that can measure the impact. And they're the one that can argue make the differences in the communities. So we have to empower them. And I think Social Enterprise UK has done a great job. And also they have uh, created a, a special purchasing scheme, for example. So uh, if you're a big uh, you know, corporate or even the UN, right? When you make a purchasing decision, um, you have to purchase from social enterprise organization. Of course, they, they can go over say 10% of the market rate and not more. So there's some uh, control you know, mechanism there. But then again, the revenue goes into those social enterprises, which in turn create the impact. So that's a lot of thing we can learn from them. And that's, you know, they're one of our kind of model as we build a uh, social enterprise Thailand. Thank you. That is a very good question where we can explain the how and the why of SU Thailand and our goal as well. Just to recap a little bit, SU Thailand is a private sector. We are a member-based organization because the next speaker, uh, he's from the Office of Social Enterprise Promotion, which is the government side. Just to uh, give you a clear picture first, we, we are private. And so apart from that, do you, do you have any other question before I? Okay. At the back, Mr. Raja, please. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, the social enterprises are getting familiarized across the world. So there are different kinds of models are available in social enterprises. So may I know that what is the special features or uniqueness of your model? So are you talking about Jasper, like my social enterprise? Yeah, I think this is any, any unique features are available there in your model. Hmm. There are a lot of unique things, but I would say that uh, the, the most unique thing about how this must be different from others. Absolutely, <laughs> which is the definition of the word unique. <laughs> I understand, <laughs> but thank you for clarifying the question. Uh, <laughs> well, um, well, actually, at the core, at the heart of of Jasper is uh, we bring to the market the real first superfood rice. So if the rice itself is unique, you know, we work with the rice scientists who developed this variety of rice for over 12 years. So actually intrinsically, this rice has a much higher nutrition and antioxidant compared to any other rice on the planet. So that alone in the cell is an innovation, which is differentiated. Actually, there's a lot of innovations around the world. What matters in, in the business world um, is uh, two things, right? Innovation and marketing. So I think like the branding part, is ultimately going to set Jasper apart from the, on the global stage. It's like me asking you what's the difference between an iPhone and, and a Samsung. The phone itself is almost identical, but it's an iPhone and it's a Samsung. So that's ultimately what we're building in the food space. A lot of people don't understand branding, right? You, you have great brands everywhere, but not in food because food is food, right? It is it, just, Okay, you have Oatly. So for those of you who drink that milk, um, no Oatly. So they're not a good job at branding. I had a traditional Swedish company who was going nowhere. Um, the, you know, one person went into the company and started creating the brand Oatly. They're now worth, I think, about $15 billion. So, uh, and, and that product is not differentiated at all. So to your point, they're, they're not doing anything unique except the brand itself. So then you can see the power of the brand. And I think in the social enterprise space, people often overlook the brand. They think like marketing and branding is evil. And for the consumer is the number one. I mean, so what we are trying to adjust which is very different in that way is that we focus heavily on the brand and the, and the uh, message. 
to the consumer? How do we connect with the consumers? How do we build loyalty? And that's why we're going to Whole Foods um, nationally, even though it costs a lot of money to go into Whole Foods, we're probably not gonna make you know much profit. But from the branding standpoint, it's huge. Um, so that's I would say, you know, in a nutshell, a, a perspective. Of course, we, we innovate on the product side a lot. We have food scientists and all of that, but I think nothing can become impactful unless the consumer purchases it ultimately. Thank you. Would you mind if I will have to pause from here first and then? Okay, of course, please. The last one, so please. No, Thank I'm you. Organic, yes. I'm actually a big fan of yes. Desperate. Right. Uh, I think the, uh, this is a group of people who care about poverty reduction. So I think one of the key unique differentiations that I've seen of them is their business model actually incorporates taking farmers out of poverty. And I remember several years ago when we worked with you, you actually recognized that the storage of rice equally was another way to get the farmers out of poverty, get them up the value chain, and you actually enabled them to like own rice storage and stuff. So that to me is what's unique about them. Yeah, so. yeah I think the, if you analyze their entire value chain, we innovate a lot. <laughs> But most people don't care anyway, right? I mean, like, yeah, if, exactly. Yeah, from, from, from the operation standpoint, we need to have a separate conversation because we do a lot of innovation there in the processing, in the storage, even in the harvesting with the farmer to get higher yield to lower cost. That's purely the impact side, you know, and, and we continue to do that. And we partner with Kiva and other organizations around the world to do so, so we don't work alone. You know, we work with angels of impact in Singapore. Uh, we work with, you know, the Dubai government. So, so we have a lot of partners. Thank you. I think I, I really like the vibe here now. Like we are talking, we are asking questions. I, I would like to keep this moving on. Uh, please allow me to introduce you to the next speaker, which is from the Office of Social Enterprise, uh, Social Enterprise Promotion. Um, his name is Mr. Tanawood Subhankarat. He is the SE Operation Professional. He will be talking about um, the mission vision of the OSEP. Um, how is it important to have the Social Enterprise Promotion Act here in Thailand and more of the details about the act itself. Actually, he also brings um, the small mini booklet here, the green color wood, sorry, yes. Yeah, you can, you can get this one booklet in front of the meeting room as well at the end of the session. Okay, please go to you. Thank you. Uh, my name is Tanawu Supangharat now, or you can call me good now, just the, the short name. Uh, I'm from uh, OSEP, I have the Office of Social Enterprise Promotion now. Uh, the office is established by the act that you will get like the green book one. Uh, the act is uh, established on 2019 and the office just established on 2020. It's just like three years. And uh, we are part of the government agency now. We have uh, three missions. The first one to be the register social enterprise in Thailand. And the second one, after we register, uh, we do promote and develop social enterprise to have like quality uh, of the operation and can get the profitable to make the good competi uh, competition in the, the business. And the last one, we uh, in the, the academic unit of the social enterprise public things. And now we have like uh, twin, uh, 226 social enterprise set that we certified it with OSEP. Uh, and we also have another type. Uh, we call it like the social business group that kind of the PSE stage that like to wait for incubate them to be the, uh, to be the social enterprise in the future. Can you be the next? All right, next please. All right, so uh, by the act, we have like uh, five criteria to be certified the social enterprises in Thailand. Please next. Okay, the first one is like uh, being a, which is a business uh, not less than a year. The second one is like having a social purpose to solve the problem of the community, society, or the environment. Uh, the third one is like the delivering not less than 50% of revenue is from sales goods or services. Uh, the third one is like using not less than 
seventy percent of the profits for social purpose or reinvest in the social enterprise. And the last one is like, uh, of course, have to have a good governance. Next, please. Okay, so there is a lot of like question for uh, enterprise who would like to be registered in Thailand, like how, uh, if they register with us, like how the benefit is coming. So there is an intensive of the social enterprises. Next, please. Okay, so there is like the five main incentive by the act. So the first, they will get like the tax benefits, like uh, for the social enterprise who will register as the uh, non profit sharing to the owner. So they will get wealth from the tax, but for the business tax. So the second one is they will get like the benefit for the public procurement with the government. The third one, they will get like the financial support from the social enterprise promotion fund. Uh, the fourth one, they will get like the public rest fund in form of the company limited. And the last one is like to be advised, training, coaching, incubate, like some of the activity that arranged by the OSEP. Next, please. And it's like the, like, the diagram about the activity that uh, we do uh, development and support for social enterprises. Like uh, we uh, drive a lot of awareness for the, for both of the business sector to to get how it's good if they are uh, if they can be the social enterprise in the future, and also for the uh, for the consumer side, we also like try to build awareness like how important that they should to be support the social enterprise and will uh, be a part of the impact generation, something like that. And also then after we do awareness, we have like kind of the, the incubation program to uh, incubate the businesses who would like to be the social enterprise. And then there will be like the social enterprise registration process, something like that. And after that, we do a lot of like online training for the business skill, reskill, up skills, thing like that. And we have some course for like, we call it SE coaching for like the business consultation, uh, consultation for social enterprise, like one-on-one -on -one with the, the business experts, something like that. And next one, we try to connect the market, try to uh, develop the market growth for social enterprise with our partner, like both of the government and the private sector as well. And the uh, last one, we try to uh, drive more incentive because we, as, as we are like the, the a government agency, right? We have to be negotiated with the other government sector as well to allow the incentive or uh, to help the social enterprise that can uh, get more revenue or something like that to make it more sustainable, something like that. Yes, that is like the recap for, from OSEP. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, actually, for, for, for Thailand, the social enterprises in the country, they, they can choose whether they would like to register themselves under the SE Promotion Act or not. It doesn't mean that if they don't register, they're not SE. It's not like that. If they would like to receive the benefits from the government, they can choose to register themselves and get the benefits that Kuntana would just mentioned. Mm -hmm. So now it's time for your question, please. Thank you for the presentation. May I ask, how long is the preparation period for the social enterprise registration? And if there are cost components, um, does your organization support the financing for that registration? or? How much capital is required for the entity to, to be able to register? The, may, may I, may I? The cost is free. Oh, okay. There is no cost for registration. Yes, yes. No? No, no cost for registration. Mm, no cost for registration. But the, the preparation from filing until the end? Um, oh, no. How uh, long? It's like, uh, it depends on the, the, the document that oh, okay. you submit because there will be required like a lot of like document that can declare how about well, like how of the good governance that you are, something like that. And uh, uh, yeah, financial record and the uh, social purpose that will be uh, 
uh, show on the business legislation. May, may I share my experience right. as, as, yeah. as the one of the SEA as well? We, we take like one to three months. It depends on um, the information. If you have it ready, it will be fast. It could be within like one month. How yeah, about you? We, we took like one week. So. Yeah, yeah, one week. Yeah, you see. If you have all the information, yes. um, especially annual report, social impact report, yes. this kind of thing. Yes. Thank you. Another two questions, please. The lady first, how about, sorry, the lady first. Yes. All right, it's about 70% there are micro business. Yep. 70. 70. Yes, 70. Zero. Zero. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Interesting question. <laughs> I would like to hear this too. Yeah. You, you would like to share first, me. <laughs> no. uh, so, so as as we are like the, the new organization, and it's very very, very small if we compare with the other ministry, something like that. So the budget. For us, it's like very small number. It's, I'm not sure that I can like. <laughs> I mean, like, uh, like. <laughs> it's like around like twenty million baht a year. Twenty, yeah, but that is very, very, very small at, at the beginning stage. Something like that, right? Mm -hmm. Now we have 25 staff. Yes. Ah, if, if you know any like you have fun to donate to us, please let me know. <laughs> All right. I think I have to stop you from here now and move on to the next speaker. I think I saved your life now. No? <laughs> Okay, okay. We can have more questions at the end of the session if we still have time, okay? So the, the next speaker is Sunit Cheta, the one uh, from Zoom. Hi, Sunit. Ka. Okay. Uh, Sunit is the managing director of the Change Fusion. I believe many of you here already know Sunit, but if not, please listen to him. He will be presenting about the Change Fusion, the works, and how he supports the social enterprises. Please ka, go to you, ka. please, Sunit. Oh, okay. Can you see the screen? Yes, can. Ka. Okay, cool. Um, so thank you, everyone. <clears throat> so I understand from the organizer that I supposed to give a little bit of overview of the journey of what Change Fusion is and what we are trying to do, uh, and and how do we see as challenge in the sector, especially from the resources and investment uh, side. Uh, so I basically recombine my many old slides and found something interesting to share, <laughs> uh, but still quite relevant today as well. So at Change Fusion, I think at the end of the day, what we are trying to do is really to build resources, uh, bridges uh, for impact enterprise uh, or, or <clears throat> enterprise that are delivering impact. So whether or not they call them social or not is okay. Uh, and as you mentioned uh, in Thailand, you don't have to call you, uh, I mean, you don't have to register for the SE Act uh, thing, uh, but you can't exactly call yourself social enterprise. That's kind of illegal, you know, so <laughs> so we have to find different ways. But uh, one, so I want to start off a little bit uh, differently. Because I, I think like in Thailand and in other similar situation, I think in Southeast Asia as well, um, we talk more and more about social enterprise and the support available and so on. So many more players coming in, but as I'm pretty sure Neil might agree, 
it's actually a very dark and sandy <laughs> road. The, the, the ecosystem supports are very fragmented. It's kind of uh, seducing a lot of young social entrepreneurs or even not so young uh, social entrepreneurs into this uh, wonderful darkness. Yeah, and many of them cannot return, you know, they're like lost somewhere. So I think a few years ago, I kind of draw this out one day. And it looked a little bit like this, uh, start from the lower left. So normally the, the journey of uh, any social enterprise, any social entrepreneurs with respect to its resources or support or investment look a little bit like this. So you start with some incubation program here and there, acceleration program here and there. Um, and there are a little bit of that available here and there, but uh, in, uh, it looks a little bit interesting, a lot of, uh, you know, excitement going on around the stage, right? And then once you set up your company, you make your first good sales, you are becoming a, the so-called a bit more sustainable. Uh, then, then the dark part started, you know, because then you are kind of in the limbo because uh, suddenly you are too big for any incubators to help you. The grants are not quite there. Uh, and then so many people talk about like, oh, impact fund, SE fund set up in now in Thailand as well. And also in, uh, in, in many other countries, um, you know, and these are like for millions of dollars of investment. Uh, it looks great and everything, except that you might never reach that stage, you know, <laughs> so yeah. So I think in the in the mid between in, in on the road is almost like uh what is that thing called uh the silk road I think it's something like that. So many desert in between you no know, wasteland and you have a little bit of uh kind of oasis here and there. Uh, and then once you suddenly make a few million dollars revenue or one or two million dollars revenues, then suddenly you can get into an other side with many support facilities and, and so on. So a lot of funding, a lot of support are quite available on the end at the end of the road, but uh, not much in between. So I think that's kind of still the sit, sit, same situation in Thailand. Uh, so a lot of people talk about like this missing middle or, or like missing stage in between. Um, but I think maybe it's require a little bit different framework in, in scaling this different social enterprise up as uh, I think the, <clears throat> our uh, social enterprise uh, agency uh, from the government mentioned most of the social enterprise registered are actually very small uh, micro businesses, right? <clears throat> um, so working at communities level, uh, so, so actually a few years ago, we did a small research uh, and plotting like different, like I think 40 of the social enterprises in Thailand in collaboration with the SE Thailand. And I think also uh, Bunora was helping maybe, I'm not sure, but uh, we found that, you know, there are very few social enterprise with, uh, you know, like revenue of more than like, 10 million baht in Thailand. Uh, so it can be like 30, 40, 50 million, but very few of them and most of them generate like somewhere less than or around 500,000 baht, which is like 15 or maybe 17,000 USD kind of thing. So, so I think that's uh, the situation. And if you look at the whole big situation, I think this is actually a known structure called long the long tail. Uh, so you have uh, some very few established or spin-off social enterprise from big corporations that are generate uh, hundreds of millions of baht or, or you know ten of million of dollars. Uh, and then you have most of the social enterprise uh, are kind of much smaller level. Uh, and especially comedy SEs, um, and they have a completely different growth path. Uh, you know, uh, the the typical impact fund uh, VC approach uh, can't, can't even touch them, you know. Um, so so I think that's a situation. So we have these different type of social enterprises that we have to support, and both are very important in that own way. So I think there are two ways of scaling this. One, one is 
kind of scaling up those who are high growth or, or can grow into big business. And that's where all these impact funds and stuff can be structured, different uh, rich financing uh, facility uh, could be set up. Uh, but then for most of other people, I think uh, this uh, replication in terms of impact scaling is not actually in scaling individual SEs, but scale, scaling that impact through uh, replications of similar uh, social enterprise at the local level, localizing it uh, with, as uh, our friend mentioned, you know, like uh, uh, government purchase and, and few other way. So I think we need different uh, way to complement uh, the growth of this thing in terms of resourcing. So uh, last fun picture. So this is, so I think like, if you think of social enterprise movement uh, as an iceberg, right? So usually we see the entrepreneurs up there with their teams, right? On like kind of floating on the water that you can see serving and so on. But below you have a lot of, you need to really build a lot of support infrastructure to make this thing work. Uh, different layers of ecosystems, for example, supporter, investor, whether individuals, organization, or networks, you know, uh, we need more crowdfunding sites that are supporting so social entrepreneurs, uh, uh, giving our investment circle or angels uh, level support. We don't actually have that much of that in Thailand. We are almost now skipping into the impact funding or impact fund uh, level without having a much of a strong base. So you see these different impact funds ending up investing outside of Thailand, uh, which might be a good good news for, for our, our friends uh, in the region who have uh, also a, a good level of, of growth. Uh, and then different uh, technology, legal and public interests. Uh, so coming back to Change Fusion, how do we try to address this thing? Uh, so we are trying to create uh, or work together with many other partners to create support ecosystems um, in different way. Uh, so from like seed, uh, different stages of the growth of the social enterprise, uh, whether that's seed level startup growth uh, scale up. Um, we, around 10 years ago, actually, we, we built uh, in different, in partnership with many other people, uh, work with, uh, we launched a uh, kind of first, maybe not first, but one of the earliest civic crowdfunding for the impact website in Thailand called Tejai with few other partners. Uh, now it grow into, uh, I think a sizable one last year, it raised around a hundred uh, something million baht uh, for social impact projects. Some of these projects are done by, uh, by social entrepreneurs or social enterprises. Um, so these are one uh, example of uh, basically giving based crowdfunding. Um, <clears throat> we run incubation program every year, uh, also acceleration programs with uh, different partners uh, like Banpu Champions for Change, um, and now also in other sectors like uh, for rural uh, innovators uh, with NA and and Chokan Chang and so on. Um, so every year we incubate maybe around five to 10 new teams. Uh, and then we have a small investment holding company called Change Ventures uh, Capital um, that invests into a few of the companies that we, we, we thought we can have a long-term relationship with uh, and build example of how, how, how social enterprise can, can really grow and become sustainable and, and, and really be a, a model for, for development. Uh, and we work with the capital market sector a little bit with uh, uh, to to develop different other investment uh, innovations uh, for impact, uh, and then try to trickle trigger some of those uh, funds, usually in terms of venture philanthropy funds, into support different uh, work of social entrepreneurs. So I think that's uh, what we have been doing. And same old story. What is new this year or, or for the past two years, we are trying to build another layer that focus uh, that we call Natureverse, uh, which is a kind of ecosystem impact subscription platform. Uh, it's basically 
a framework that we try to work with those um, organizations, whether it's a social enterprise or even nonprofit who can uh, who work with the communities to deliver ecosystem service impact, you know, anything from uh, carbon, biodiversity, water, uh, and uh, soil erosion prevention, and those different ecosystem service uh, thing uh, from community forest to community based marine protected areas uh, and help them quantify their impact and then find a different way for them to find. Uh, supporters or subscriber uh, to those impact uh, that they are generating every year so that these supporters can claim those impacts on their sustainability report or, or, or other, um, uh, other interests. So that's actually something we are trying to work more and more on so that we have uh, nature positive or nature-based solutions, uh, impact enterprises uh, that we can really help support that way. Um, Lastly, uh, we are working with many other partners now uh, to form something we call Investing for Impact Thailand Task Force, which is uh, a, a kind of working group uh, in collaboration with the so-called Global Steering Group for Impact Investing uh, on the Thai, Thai version of that, uh, that are trying to do a few things uh, in growing this impact investment sector in Thailand. Uh, first is market awareness and participation in the full spectrum approach, uh, whether that's a venture philanthropy, impact investment, ESG investment, uh, anything that, that can come back into measurable impact. Uh, second is to, to really work around the impact standard quality and integrity uh, so that uh, we have a common standard that we can work with. Uh, so it's a kind of like a way to translate between uh, investor, supporter, and uh, entrepreneurs, right? Uh, lastly, uh, we also try to uh, facilitate uh, different investment, new investment products that can be developed uh, to support uh, many of these impact entrepreneurs. Uh, but these are still uh, a work in progress and it's, a fo uh, it's forming as a, a, a working group now with a strategy um, <clears throat> and partners and the task force member includes uh, SE Thailand, Andy, uh, Disrupt Impact, Impact Hub, Asia Pacific, I think, uh, THI, TDRI, Change Fusion, Equitable Education Fund, UNDP, Sassin, and UNOS Thailand. And these are people simply joining some of our work group meeting. And, and we are trying to drive, drive this thing in, in Thailand. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Please, Suni. Can you give like a, a whole picture of the social enterprises in Thailand already? You know the type, you know the challenges, you know the next step, you know the ecosystem, you know that the next step we are trying to do to drive the impact investment is to have the Thailand National Advisory Board as well. I I just got a message from Gomer saying that we should be on time. <laughs> That's what I'm asking you all here that we might have to shorten some of the questions here. So if you don't mind, I will continue with the presentation first and keep the Q&A session at the end, only one time. Okay, thank you. So moving on to um, the next speaker, please, Ms. Bunwara Sumano, PhD. She's the Senior F uh, Research Fellow of the Thailand Development Research Institute. Um, okay, ka. Thank you very much for inviting me to share with you guys about uh, TDRI and some of our works. Um, my name is Bunwara, but you can call me Yui, Y-U-I Yui. That's shorter and it's probably more um, international. Um, <laughs> so uh, TDRI or Thailand Development Research Institute um, is a non-profit, non-government research uh, think tank in Thailand. Uh, we just celebrated our 39th um, birthday uh, a couple of weeks ago. And um, mostly we do uh, research on uh, social and economic development policy in Thailand and uh, Asia Pacific region. Um, we have around 200 uh, staff, um, around 20 of them are PhDs, and uh, we also work with both uh, government uh, agencies, international organizations like um, SCAP, and 
also private organizations uh, with um, public purposes, such as SE Thailand. Uh, some of our research uh, include educational reform, climate change, um, innovation policies, and social investment. And um, this is one of our projects that uh, I uh, participated back in 2020. Um, some of you might already uh, saw this report. It received a lot of support from many agencies, as you can see from <laughs> the head of the presentation. So British Council, SCAP, and um, many others. Uh, so I'm going to share with you a little bit about this uh, particular research because it's um, directly uh, applicable to many of you here. Um, back then, uh, well, the COVID just started uh, and we kind of wonder what uh, would the impact of COVID be like on um, social enterprises in Thailand. And we also want to know um, where are the social enterprises in Thailand? What are they doing? And uh, what have been the impacts and um, any uh, limitations they might face and what kind of support uh, do they need? So we interview um, 19 uh, stakeholders and also distributed um, surveys through um, Survey Monkey because th that was uh, during the lockdown. Um, and we receive uh, feedback, uh, response um, from 202 uh, response, yes. And we use um, uh, three uh, criteria to screen those uh, who um, we believe are uh, have the characteristic of being social enterprises. And this criteria uh, was developed by uh, the British Council. They use this criteria um, with every country that they do the similar studies. Uh, I understand that there are uh, one in Malaysia, one in Vietnam, um, and also uh, Cambodia, which also use this criteria. So the first one is uh, to ask about their purpose. If um, they only, uh, if they answer that they only have a uh, for-profit purpose, then they will, uh, we will screen them out. And um, the second criteria is uh, where their income uh, come from. If they only receive um, grants uh, or donation, then we uh, screen them out as well. And um, the last question is how they plan to use the profit or surplus of the business. And um, if they uh, planned it to share the profit among stakeholders, then we screen them out as well. And in the end, we receive 146 um, businesses that fit the criteria of social enterprises in Thailand. But um, these, not all of them, are registered social enterprise according to the law. Okay. Um, next slide, please. And just to share with you uh, the summary of findings from our survey and um, uh, the, the interviews that we uh, conducted. So uh, the majority of SEs in Thailand uh, are in agricultural sector and uh, health and education. With This might be similar to uh, many other countries. Um, many of them were um, established among uh, Oh, between the year 2008 to 2017. Note that this uh, was the period of time when the uh, attempt to push for social enterprise were um, quite intense. 
Um, so if the Philippines uh, has been uh, pushing <laughs> for the registration for 12 years, well, in Thailand, it, it began around 2008, 2007, probably. Um, and the location of SEs are mostly uh, in Bangkok. And uh, that legal entity, uh, uh, the majority of them are limited companies. Uh, around, I think 17% of these are registered uh, social enterprises according to the law. Um, and they uh, employ young people. Uh, and also women and um, single mothers. Uh, and they uh, social enterprises in Thailand are more uh, often led by women comparing to uh, businesses more widely. I think um, in Thailand, uh, the uh, ratio of uh, women-led business is around to, uh, 24, 25%. Um, in Asia Pacific is around, um, <laughs> uh, 11 um, to uh, 18, if, if I'm not mistaken. Um, but uh, in this survey, we found that 35% uh, of our survey um, SEs are led by women, um, being women as CEO, not like uh, CFO or any finance or um, and many of them tend to receive non-financial support in the form of trainings. Um, and uh, they do not hire volunteers anymore. So they actually employ full-time and uh, part-time workers. And they uh, also are quite resilient. We found that, um, uh, well, the research, the survey was dis distributed during uh, 2020, which was the first wave of COVID. And at the time, most uh, of our survey SE didn't uh, fall on uh, a lot of staff. Uh, many of them uh, maintained the, the employees. But they do need a lot of support, especially financial ones. We found that um, many... SEs uh, said that they didn't receive any financial support or even lack the access to uh, ones um, due to the lack of collaterals and um, many requirements from um, uh, commercial banks. And um, they still uh, wait for um, the benefits from uh, registered uh, according to the law, uh, including government procurement um, and the um, many other uh, support uh, according from the law. But that's that was uh, back in two thousand and twenty. Yeah. So I I will stop here <laughs> as we have to be on time. But uh, please. Feel free to ask any question afterwards. Thank you. Thank you so much um, for the presentation on the research of SE in, in Thailand. Actually, you, you, you all can visit the website to see the full report as well. I think the key for our presentation is to see what are they in, in Thailand so you can shopping and, and getting to know each other later on. Okay, let, let me move on to the last speaker here, please. Uh, Mr. Colin McKenzie, he's the co-founder and managing director of UNUS Thailand. He also sits on the steering committee for the UNUS professional masters in social business and entrepreneurship at the Asian Institute of Technology, where he also teaches the UNUS practicum. I think the keyword here with uh, Kalam and UNUS Thailand is the term social business. All right, would you mind, please? The floor is yours now. Thank you. Fantastic. Well, thank you for the very long <laughs> and nice uh, introduction. So, uh, yeah, greetings, everybody. Really excited to be here and privileged to, to be on this panel with these fantastic speakers um, as well. So, yep, yeah, I'm here from UNIS Thailand. So you might recognize that the UNIS bit, um, so I'll 
big boss is uh, Professor Mohammed Yunus. Um, so we're part of the, the kind of the global uh, Yunus network, but we've really been uh, operating in Thailand. Well, Yunus Thailand's been around for nearly three years. Uh, so we've got our, our birthday next month. Um, so yeah, look out for a birthday invite. <laughs> um, but uh, we also have the UNIS Center, the Asian Institute of Technology, uh, which has been around for about 13 years, which is more on the academic side. We also have a UNIS Center at Kasatsat University here and, and a kind of a global network of about 104 UNIS Centers at different universities um, around the world. But I'll talk mainly about UNIS Thailand today. And um, really, our, our job is to kind of be a bit of a driving engine for, for social business here in, in a Thai context. In, and also working with regional partners for, for ASEAN uh, impact um, as well. But maybe on to the, the next slide. But just kind of unpacking a little bit about why we exist, uh, firstly, I think it really comes down to recognition of two big things. Number one, that we're in the middle of a climate crisis. And number two, we're in the middle of, a, of an inequality crisis as well. I think that's very, very um obvious here in Thailand as well, as well as in other countries in the region. Apologies for the PM 2.5 as well. <laughs> but um, I think if we go to the next slide, um, I think this is the, the, the other recognition that we have as an organization as well, is that if we're going to actually address the climate crisis, if we're going to address the inequality crisis, we can't just tweak the system, right? We need a systems change. And for us, that's really about how can we transform capitalism away from just being about profit maximization, making money, but actually using the power of markets to solve social and environmental problems. And I love this systems change, not, not climate change. So I think this is, you know, just to get to the, the why of why we, we, we're really here. If we go to the next uh, slide. And this is the other thing, right? Ultimately, we do believe that social businesses do provide solutions. They're sustainable solutions, but they're also scalable solutions as well. So we, so these are kind of the, the precepts that we're kind of working on as, as an organization. We Markets can be used for good. We can create sustainable and scalable solutions through social business, through social enterprises. We go to the next slide, please. And I might need you to, to do a bit of clicking through here because I put some animations in for today. <laughs> but really, our job is to increase the number of good social businesses here in Thailand and in the region. What do we mean by good? Financially sustainable and making measurable social and environmental impacts. So this is kind of our mission, right? And we're doing this because we want to transform this capitalism, as, as we mentioned, away from just making money to solving social and environmental problems, to create an inclusive society and a, and a sustainable planet. And this is where our kind of our, our big vision kind of comes in, which is what we talk about, a world of three zeros, a world of zero net carbon emissions, a world of where we've got zero unemployment because we're unleashing the power of entrepreneurship and a world where we're also seeing zero poverty by ending extreme wealth concentration as well. So these are kind of a, you can also connect these to kind of these big mega trends that we're, we're seeing in the, in the global economy, global society today. So how are we actually doing this, right? So you can kind of put our work into these four buckets. The first one is really, how can we engage and educate people in social entrepreneurship? How can we actually support social businesses and really enable them to be both financially sustainable and also uh, impactful as well. We also need to practice what we preach uh, as well. So we actually develop social businesses ourselves and we try to do this in partnership, particularly focusing on empowering marginalized groups and, and integrating that empowerment also with environmental action. And then the, the fourth bit as well is really how can we be a thought leader, right? Number one, to strengthen and scale the social business sector. But number two, also to stimulate demand for, for social business and social enterprise as well. So this is kind of our, our theory of change. Hopefully it, hopefully it makes sense to everyone. 
and um, a lot to do, but we do that in partnership, of course. And uh, we're still a, a, a very new organization, but we were quite busy uh, last year. So this is just some of the numbers from our from our work. So we, we through our different campaigns, we've reached uh, more than 900,000 people educated. I'm, I'm not going to read all this out. You can all read it. <laughs> you can all read it ourselves. But really, this is this is work that we've done through uh, some really uh, impactful partnerships as well, working with the SME Bank of Thailand to to provide finance for, for small businesses, working with corporates to change them from CSR work to, to actually impactful uh, sustainability initiatives as well. And also running a lot of workshops as well, supporting social entrepreneurs uh, ourselves. Um, maybe if we go to the next slide then. So I've been quite, uh, uh, well, hopefully this is also fit for you as well, but I've put in a couple of projects that we're doing this year that hopefully these are good partnership opportunities for, for people in the room as well and and also can bring value to, to your work as well as hopefully you know being an opportunity to scale what what we're doing as well so the first one is called waste hero so this is a, a global education campaign where we're working to educate a million people in the circular economy so we've developed 19 different educational packages from the from kindergarten all the way through to kind of university and and social enterprise startup level as well and you can access all these materials for free uh, on the website wasteheroeducation.com they're translated into a number of different languages as well um, and also if there's particular requests for translations we can also uh, look at that too um, so yeah, if you've got people that these materials will be useful for, please use them, reach out to us. We'd love to love to work you on this. The second one is we're, we're trying to build a, a youth network um, as well called uh, Three Zero Clubs. So this is basically bringing five young people together to create a club where they themselves develop an action plan to solve a social or environmental problem. So we have around 553 zero clubs globally. Uh, we've just started this year with creating the first batch in, in Thailand as well. But importantly with this network, we have a big kind of ecosystem of support people, support organizations that's free for young people to connect with and, and help get support to scale up their work. It's also our job to connect three zero clubs with other three zero clubs, right? So this is where five three zero clubs can come together and create a three zero circle. And then we can also create three zero networks as well. This might be people working in the same geographic space, but also in the same kind of uh, thematic or sectoral focus uh, as well. So what we're really trying to do here is basically create a decentralized network of young change makers. They're gonna drive uh, social impact, environmental impact, and also this is the kind of the very early stage in a pipeline to creating more social entrepreneurs uh, as well. So again, we're here to, to, if you have young people in your network that would be interested in creating three zero clubs, get in touch and it's our job to, to support them and, and link them up with this, with this big network. Another program we do is we, we have a SB Hatch, which is our nine month incubator for early stage uh, social entrepreneurs. So we have six uh, social businesses in, in our kind of our, our current batch at the moment. So they've all got proof of proof of work. They've all got some form of kind of minimum viable product, some some aspect of skin in the game, but still a little bit early stage and rough and ready. And it's our job to really provide coaching, provide technical sessions, growth sessions, uh, access to networks, hopefully access to finance as well so that they can basically go uh, through that that um, dark and sandy road that <laughs> and Sunit was talking about as well. So uh, again, if you know uh, good social entrepreneurs that would be interested and could benefit from this program, or you'd be interested in, in supporting this program as well, please, please uh, reach out on this point too. Uh, if we go to the next slide. So this is a, a, a new project that we're, um, that's launching this year as well. So we're working with Audi to basically see how we can get social businesses and social enterprises to be suppliers for some of their corporate services uh, here, in, here in Thailand. 
So at this point in time, it's probably going to be quite difficult to have social businesses uh, supplying them for uh, complex car parts or, or these kind of things. But uh, factory uniforms is a, is a good opportunity as well. Catering services, uh, corporate gifts. So, of course, these, these kind of purchases uh, are not going to drive complete corporate transformation. But what they do do is provide good revenue opportunities and we can open markets for uh, social businesses and social enterprises that can have an impact for, for social enterprises here. So again, if you think you know some social enterprises that would benefit from, from these kind of services, please uh, please get in touch as well. And the next slide, please. Yeah, so you can kind of see some of our engagement and education work, uh, kind of talked a little bit about some of our support for social businesses. In terms of what we're actually doing regarding developing social businesses ourselves, is we're first project uh, is called uh, Seaweed Social Business. So we're working in the, in the south of Thailand, uh, near the Malaysian border, to try and innovate and develop a, a micro franchise model. That means that any community entrepreneur can become a seaweed entrepreneur. Why seaweed? Well, firstly, it's uh, one of the best ways of absorbing CO2 and greenhouse gases are really uh, really fantastic carbon sequestration approach. It's also a superfood um, as well, really high in nutrients and has big health benefits. But also it's a high value, high growth industry that really uh, is in a unique place where it has the problem of there's too much demand to meet, uh, there's not enough supply to meet the demand. So a big opportunity uh, here as well. So we're, um, so we're basically trying to innovate and we've developed a, a model now where it's really easy for anybody to become a seaweed entrepreneur. They can do that with a capex of less than 10,000 baht and uh, still in the, the finalization phases, but looking like a break even point after five months um, as well. So this is what we're trying to uh, build out and then scale this throughout the South of Thailand and maybe bring it to other countries uh, in the region uh, as well. Can the next slide as well here with so a project we did uh, last year, which is kind of scaled into this year as well, is called the Waste Hero Alliance. So we all talk about the transition to circular economy. We're all talking about how we can create zero waste. But as we transition to uh, and try to scale the recycling industry, what actually happens to the people who are actually driving that in this region as well? The informal waste workers. Uh, or as they're known in Thailand, Saleng. So what we really need to do is create a, a circular economy with empowered waste workers at the core. So we ran a kind of a, a design for policy um, kind of program last year where we brought informal waste workers and youth climate activists together and we developed five policy uh, prototypes, which we then presented at the United Nations General Assembly. And then as an ex from this, one of the, the world's largest uh, recycling companies then adopted uh, a policy from this. And we're now working in their supply chains to basically empower informal waste workers through social business so that they have good working conditions, fair wages, health and safety is adhered to, and also aspects around entrepreneurship support um, as well. So another area we're trying to really demonstrate that social business can be a fantastic solution. And then uh, the next slide as well. And then just a, a couple of examples for our thought leadership uh, work uh, as well. So uh, this has been a big project that's been on for, for a number of years, but uh, it's kind of just been finalized, uh, which is uh, we've collected 101 uh, case studies of grassroots innovation as well. So these, these are coming from community enterprises to social enterprises, to corporate projects, to government initiatives um, as well. We've compiled this within a, uh, within a report. And, and this is just one example of some of the research work that we're doing as well. I think we're very interested this year in, in partnerships and collaboration around social procurement and public procurement, as well as a big opportunity. And also looking at um, a research series around the social business of uh, different sectors as well to kind of stimulate uh, demand as well. So research is something I think that's still very needed in in this area. Of course, sat next to the the the, the champions of this 
uh, as well in this field, but um, maybe an opportunity to partner as well. Um, and then on the, the, the next slide, if that's okay, events uh, as well. So I think some of you may have came to Social Business Day when we organized it in Bangkok in 2019. Uh, this year, it's going to be in Langkawi in Malaysia. So social business on the beach. Hopefully that sounds good to, good to everybody. So this is kind of the big annual event of the, the UNIS network and, and the UNIS network's friends uh, as well. So last time it was in person, we had about 1,600 delegates from 64 countries all around the world. And that ranged from, uh, we had royalty and CEOs and, and high ranking government ministers on one side, but we also had more than uh, 200 community entrepreneurs and community members there as well. And we try and organize this as really a, a very horizontal event, uh, almost a bit like a social business festival rather than a kind of a formal conference as well. So would love uh, for you know all these friendly faces to be in, in Langkawi at the end of uh, July uh, as well. And then the, the final slide is the, as well is just, um, yeah, shameless plug. <laughs> We're organizing a bit of a party tomorrow night uh, as well, just with the very simple idea of we're all working to the same uh, to the same ends. We're all, uh, I think there's so many nice people in this space and there's a lot to be gained from just getting everybody together. Nothing really too formal, but let's all just have some interesting chats, interesting conversations. And uh, yeah, if we don't do social business with joy, then uh, what's it all for, eh? So uh, yeah, I think that's everything from, from me. Thank you so much, Callum, and thank you all the speakers for the first part, which is the presentation. Um, please allow me to move on to the next part, which is the panel discussion. Actually, I told you that we are going to have three big questions since we have um, a very little time left. I think I will have to combine all the three questions and ask you all at the same time. I promise it's not difficult, okay? So bear with me first. Huh? So uh, what we are going to do is I will ask you all, every one of you, one big question, which actually consists of three small questions in that. <laughs> and then every one of you, please um, reply in your view, share your perspective within one or two minutes. And then we will spend the remaining time for the Q&A session where everyone would love to ask all of you the questions. Okay, so my questions to you all is, um, how SE could lead to the achievement of the SDGs? What you think is the missing points, uh, missing ecosystem, missing in the SE ecosystem in Thailand? And what could be the possible initiatives in the region where we can also collaborate? So the first one is how it, how SE could lead to the SDG? What you see is the missing links, missing points, and what is the possibility or initiatives that we can collaborate together? So let's start with um, Neil Pitache first. Thank you. Okay, so um, the first question is how can I see um, help with their human of SDG, right? So I think that inherently, if you're an SE, you have SDG related goals, right? So that goes without saying. Um, at Jasper, we, we tackle three SDG, no poverty, zero hunger, and climate action. So we measure um, all that according to SDGs as well, because it's part of the uh, global network that we are in, right? So I think uh, the first question is pretty, pretty straightforward, because once you have an SE, you, it should be relating to the SDG goals, right? In whether it's directly or indirectly. And then I think the challenge is how do you measure that? And what organization uh, measure that? You know, we work with um, uh, formerly called Shoot Job Double uh, Foundation in Singapore on on um, you know on, uh, impact measurement. Uh, obviously, we are certified B Corp with the U.S. organization, so they do measurement with us. I think that's the challenge, right? Um, the actual measurement. So the second question: What is missing in the ecosystem? And I think we see this globally, uh, especially regionally here in, in ASEAN, um, two key things. The first is the financing, right? We talk about capitalism. That's what drove um, the Silicon Valley and the tech movement, right? Was basically the flow of capital uh, into that sector. We don't have that, right? With social enterprises. The second missing, which is relating to the first one as well, is uh, great people. Right to build a to build a great company, you just need great people. That's why Google is Google. They have 
some of the best people, the smartest people on the planet working with them. That's why NASA is NASA. So for social enterprises, it's extremely hard for us to attract the best talent. Offering them uh, high salaries is, is, is obviously a challenge itself, which re relating to, to, to capital, but also um, how, how do we present it as a viable career choice? and not something that they come and work with SE for a couple of years, and then you move on. Because you need, you really need great people for five to 10 years to build a company, right? If there is, for you, with you for two years, it's just not really, you know, you train them, they contribute and they leave, right? Um, many, many of my staff have gone on and started their own company, which I'm happy for, but, uh, you know, if they're still with us for, five to ten years then we can really build the organization together and i think the younger people today all want to be entrepreneurs and without the realization that 99 percent of them will fail so why don't you come and build an organize help build an organization that um that that already put in the groundwork that have navigated those risks that have proven that after five or six years um they're still going strong and and you know, like for us, right? We have employee stock option, so they will become shareholder of Jasper, which is the model that they use in a lot of successful companies, especially in the United States. So I think there's two missing pieces, which is the the human capital and the financing is a huge hindrance um, to the growth of social enterprise, all, all especially in this region, because um, we they have better access in Europe and US for both the human capital and financing. Um, the initiative that can be done, like just off the top of my head, I think it's really important even for the people sitting in this room to form like circle of people who work in the same area and really to work out which area you should specialize in. When you talk about funding and, you know, soon you touch on it, it's pretty complex, right? There's philanthropic funding, there's, you know, grant, there's debt, there's, you know, equity, there's convertible, um, there's different uh, fund focusing on different stages. You know, C stage, growth stage, mature. So a lot of this is overlapping, right? It should, we always feel like that's why we created SE Thailand is we want to be a home for the private, on the private side. And then we have the Thailand Social Enterprise Office as the public side. And we don't need a whole lot of other organizations. We work together to collaborate instead of competing. And, and then, you know, for me as a social entrepreneur, I don't want to talk to like 20 people. You know, I want to talk to one organization if I'm raising funding, all right? It, 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 otherwise, I have to repeat myself 20 times, build a relationship 20 times, you know, take all the time and effort. So it takes time to build a relationship. It takes time to build trust. And that's really key when you're doing any partnership together. So I feel like there could be a lot of just condensing about this organization and, and for them to specialize more in certain area within the funding space, within the human capital space, which I don't really see much in the initiative. Like we're not talking about how do we hire people who work for social enterprises, right? There's no employment platform I can go to. I have to use, uh, you know, the same employment platform, Nestle, <laughs> or Google, you know, like it is not very um, targeted to the right group of people that want to work with social enterprises. So yeah, those are just my thoughts on it. Uh, uh, from, from my side, it's like for the first question to be achieved the, the SDG. I also agree with Kunni or not that uh, all the social enterprise will have like the social purpose already. But in the same time, uh, you should to like uh, you should to measure the the impact that uh, the social enterprise have been. Uh, make the social impact so after you measure it you can like have a plan to develop and expand your impact to be getting more beneficiaries or more wider of the social impact uh, also in the same time as the 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 enterprise you should to back to see uh, how the the business performance is going like uh, is it profitable so if the enterprise can earn the profit so i think it can and run continually to making the, the, the social impact. And for the second one is something that's missing in the 
SE ecosystem in Thailand. I, I also think about the, the impact investment that is quite uh, not too many in, in Thailand. And uh, as Pisunit uh, show you about the project, that's quite interesting. And the last one is the, the possible initiative in the region. I think uh, the networking is quite very impactful for the social enterprise. And it's not just only the, the sharing the knowledge to each other, but I think sharing the opportunity as well. That is kind of the key point that we can make the, the regional initiative. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, can we go to Pisunit first? <laughs> yeah, following the same order. Pisunit, could you please share your perspective on the questions? So, <clears throat> sorry. So I I agree with, with everyone. <laughs> and I think they have mentioned everything almost already. Uh, maybe just a few, few add-on to what they have mentioned. I think uh, the adopting uh, common impact standards uh, whether that's sdg or, or something around sdg and and this and have a way to disclose that together uh, in a in a trustworthy way i think that's still very very important because if you look at the end of the day the only thing that differentiates impact enterprise social enterprise from the rest of other companies or organization is probably the <clears throat> the impact uh, measurements or the, the impact outcome, right? Uh, and also the, the, the business uh, model. So I think uh, it's really critical. Um, and also if you talk, want to talk about regional initiative or regional collaboration, uh, you need a kind of common language, right? Uh, to work together, uh, whether those are different incubators or uh, accelerators uh, kind of, partnership or invest investment, uh, cross-border investment, um, then you common language is, is definitely, you know, impact uh, indicators and data, right? So I think that's why this thing is quite important. And I think it's quite confusing today, you know, in Thailand for some very strange pe reason, I think people are a bit more and more becoming obsessed with the social return on investment. Uh, especially the monetizing of social return on investment. I, I think that is can be useful and important for certain kind of uh, works, but I think it's mostly useless for, I mean, not useless, but not that useful to, to most of uh, those people in, in the sector um, because you should focus on, on the basic thing first, like what exactly are the impact that you can deliver and measure and communicate clearly to everyone every year. Uh, I think that is in, in one critical area of potential collaboration. Um, and we don't have much of that standard in, in Thailand or, or agreement to use or something. And or even at a regional level, I also uh, didn't see much uh, compared to, for example, the ESG movement on the capital market side. It started off very confusing like a few years ago. Uh, now it's kind of coming into one common framework called ISSB, the International uh, Impact Standard uh, something. <laughs> B. Uh, so I think uh, we, we should really work around that uh, so that we can can work on, on different things. And, and lastly, lo locally, I think uh, angels, investor or, or normal people supporting social entrepreneurs, um, especially people with enough cash in hands, uh, you know, they cannot do much on crypto anymore. So uh, maybe it's not the same kind of people, but, uh, you know, um, maybe they should really look at so working together with social entrepreneurs uh, because i think un unless we have like a uh, few hundred more angels investors for in impact enterprise or social enterprise i i think scaling the whole thing up to a vc level thing would be very very difficult and, and now very very few people in 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 the market today thank you thank you moving on to Kunmanwara, please thank you Thank you. I think the perk of being one of the last speaker is that I don't have to say much because <laughs> everything has already been said. Um, on the first question, as um, 
other panelists already uh, said that uh, just uh, the purpose of uh, SEs are all aligned with um, the SDG goals anyway. And uh, from our uh, SE survey uh, report, we saw um, the SDG goal uh, five in particular on, on um, gender equality uh, as uh, SE in Thailand tend to uh, be led uh, by women co when comparing to businesses uh, more widely in Thailand. And also um, we saw more women accessing into uh, the sectors that had traditionally been viewed as uh, male dominance, such as energy and transport. Uh, we found that there, that there were um, <laughs> women CEOs working um, in that sector. So I think um, in, in terms of SDG 5, it's very uh, evident. And uh, on the second question, the missing points, obviously the finance, the people, the lack of impact assessment, um, and I just add another factor, uh, which I believe is very important, is trust. Um, in Thailand, especially, there's still um, some people who have doubt about why do businesses want to do social things or why do they care about environment is very um, that perception of businesses that has to be profit seeking and uh, if they want to do something then oh is it a greenwashing is it a um, way to make themselves look good but um, not really care for the impact but I, I think um, this is one of the um, very important missing point in, in this ecosystem. And for the uh, last question about the opportunity, um, I, I believe there are many innovative models that uh, SE can um, experiment with. Uh, for example, um, in Thailand, we are um, together with um, um, the global uh, steering committee and, and the um, Thailand uh, impact uh, task force, TIFI. <laughs> uh, we are trying to push for um, social impact bond uh, in Thailand, which can be used uh, for many um, objectives. So one of them could be to promote SEs, to uh, strengthen them. Um, and it could be a new source of funding that um, SEs are want to access to. Uh, it should be more flexible than, than government support. You know, we don't have to um, comply with all the too strict regulation uh, when applying for uh, loans from governments or some commercial banks. And it could be more uh, accessible for SEs and small businesses as a whole. Thank you. Always difficult going last after a load of smart people, eh? Um, <laughs> I do agree with everything, yeah. Um, maybe just to add uh, a couple of maybe slightly different but complementary points uh, as well. I think the first thing is that um, in terms of if we're going to see SEs uh, be a major driver in terms of uh, solving the SDGs, we need to make the pie bigger. I think the there's we're sat on a, a big opportunity where so many young people today uh, are more environmentally aware and more socially driven. So we need to get them involved in in social business, social enterprise from an early age um, as well. As as Kunmech I mentioned earlier today, you know, teaching social business, social enterprise in in primary schools. So I think this is the the first thing, and and really connecting. Uh, you know, getting growing the, the ecosystem and, and growing a, a social movement around social business, social enterprise. Connected to that is, uh, you know, I'd like to, you know, cite um, one of one of Kunsunit's uh, squiggly drawings um, of that of that pipeline and, and pathway as well. And to kind of put it in uh, business terms, you know, to really understand and, and have clarity on that customer journey from hearing about social 
business social enterprise to actually becoming a you know a, a social entrepreneur and, and an impact unicorn and how we can really cohesively plug all the gaps uh, along that pipeline and and that really comes down to ecosystem organizations like like ourselves really collaborating intensively uh, you know it's not always easy when we're always so busy but really um working cohesively uh, along that pipeline as well and then i think the the third aspect which is related to kind of different initiatives that we could collaboratively work on as well particularly considering uh, uh, this event uh, from a regional dimension is um you know it's a great point identified in terms of how can we get more talent into the sector um as well and this is a good example of where you know the social business uh, sectors in our in our respective countries are small right but if we have them coming together within a regional platform for example in this example but it could be uh, for, for hiring or recruitment but it could be in another area this is where actually we can reach scales of economy we can actually have scales of solution as well and and also group funding uh, together as well so i think looking identifying key opportunities where we need to have maybe a, a, a bigger ecosystem system for a, an effective solution could be a great way could be a great first place to, to start in terms of identifying regional collaborations as well but um, I think we're going to have a lot of really interesting questions uh, as well so I'll, I'll stop there thank you so much for all the great view from all of you I also have seen some of the questions online as well so let me recap a little bit what we have done together in the past uh, hour we have learned about what is the SE like in Thailand what is the situation you know who are driving the social enterprises in Thailand you 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 know you know now um five total organizations five to six organizations now you also understand um what are the challenges of SE how could we work together how could we overcome that and just to sum up i i think that you all agree that you see the both um bright side and the dark side of the se but at the end of the day we really need to work together to have the collaborative impact and i think that's the key of the event of the session today so please keep continue connection uh, connect to each other some of you ask of the contact of the OSEP team some of the organization please contact Gomer and the ICA team I think they, they they can share with you all as well so uh, let's move on to the last part about the Q&A session would you mind if I will have only 15 minutes late so we stop the questions until uh, noon 12 uh, noon 15 no so the question may i go on online first because they have been posting the the questions already so the first question is also about the contact i, or, I already uh, replied that um i think this question goes to tdri um so i just read it out loud um the definition of se is varied is it possible to have a broad definition of se so the survey will cover the whole spectrum rather than only social enterprise by law Thank you. Thank you for the question. Um, the survey used the more broader definition of uh, social enterprises, not not according to the uh, SE by law. Yeah. All right, that's pretty clear. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So now for the on-site participants, how should we do it? Like the quickest? <laughs> okay, the quickest, please. Okay. Uh I am from, uh, I am the coordinator of the Hamlet Southeast Asia, which basically we have young members here in Thailand. So my first question is, what would be the role of the SE promotion app uh, in the transition of informality to formality? Uh, the same thing, uh, yes and no. Okay. How can our group, the humble workers, basically, can the social enterprises to be our big sister or our big brother. And lastly, what can you say about the IL campaign? Uh, what can you say about the IL campaign on SSE or the social solidarity economy through IL recommendation 24? Okay. Sorry, could you please repeat the question one by one again? So the first question, 
social enterprise promotion act uh, in transition from informality to formality second uh, how can this is this a or, or the homeless workers organization specifically in thailand because we have a lot of them here uh, the social enterprises as our big also a big or sister and the third what can you say about IO campaign and social solidarity economy through IELC recommendation 204, if you have heard that? Okay, the first question goes to OSEP. The yeah. second question, which person would you like to ask, Miss? Uh, two. Okay. And the last question goes to who? Okay. Okay. So let's start with the first question. Uh, how The role of SE Act. Uh, transitioning from informal to formal formality. Okay. Uh, all right. Okay. So, uh, as the Social Enterprise Promotion Act 2019, so we will have like two types of the registration. The first one we call for, for the, the, the social enterprises that I show the five criteria that uh, one of them is like you should, you must to be the registered business, not less than a year. But for, for the second group, we call it is the social business groups. It's like the pre-stage of SE that we will be including the individual person, uh, a club or a group of the communities that can be registered as the social business group first to be get involved with the, the OSEP and get some treatment about the, the training, like we said training, uh, some kind of the market growth that we can connect with our partner, something like that. So we will uh, taking care of this kind of, uh, in, in this group to develop them to be the SE in the future, something like that. That can be like transform the informal to be formal. Thank you. All right, and the second question, how, how home-based workers become SE, they get it right. Uh, how, how do we engage? Mm. All right, me. Mm. If we say that the OSEP is the biggest brother in the country. <laughs> okay, come. It's like how we can engage with like the, our target who would like to be a social enterprise the informal workers. All right. Okay. Uh, for, for me, like, for example, like, nowadays we have a lot of, like, digital nomad or freelancer that who, like, do, like, home-based work, something like that. And I think most of them nowadays, they, they, they they develop themselves to be the, like the legitimate business already, but still do like some like home-based work. So I think uh, as also we, we are trying to be like the, the middleman to be connect the people to the people as well. Like we try to connect like the big corporation who would like to be developed, like try to uh, uh, drive more social impact movement that will be according to like those informal worker. So I think this way also I have like an example that we try to, to match to each other, something like that. Sorry, um, for the third question about social and solidarity economy, I think it's quite broad here and we might not have time to answer for that. Would you mind if we just get the answer from other speakers and share you later on? So, no, okay. Mm. May I answer that? We have the roadmap. We have several programs. We can share you later on. And Yunus Thailand's work is one of the example of the several programs here. But for the OSEP, they also have the plan. Like we have the Thailand national plan for 20 years and it relates with the social enterprises promotion act as well. Okay. 
the uh, gentlemen, please. I think we can have um, three more questions from everyone now. I'll have only one <laughs> question. So, <laughs> um, uh, coming back a little bit to your question to the missing point, uh, I would like to start from there a little bit. So then I will go to the question to uh, just Barry. So when we talk about the, the human resources and skills problems, my understanding based on our experience is that it's very important to educate the young people. So I agree a point to UNES uh, Institute where you, uh, the young kids, uh, you can start the social business at school. And in our organization, for example, now I'm collaborating the high school student from Japan. We do to the Zoom meetings and the, the field visit where the, the student learn the social enterprise. So the idea is to start the, uh, the concept of social enterprise when, since they were young. So once the people change the mindset, it will be in the whole society will change. Otherwise, if they don't have the mindset or the education of the social enterprise, most people will go to money or you know, where they can go a better benefits or where they can make more money. So I think my point is, to start from the young generations to change the mindset of the society. So the question goes to the just uh, just Barry is that how how can you solve this problem? In your opinion, what do you think what will be a solving problem for to hold or to let the younger generation join with you or associate the price like somebody who is running for a better a better society? How will be your solution in your opinion? I, th I think the world is already moving in that direction. We actually don't have to do a lot. We live already in a woke culture. Uh, you see, you know, people protesting since they're, you know, Greta Thunberg. You see those kind of people inspiring the younger generation. I think that that's really not the issue. You know, like when I first started, maybe eight years ago, I used to have to go to a school and university and educate young people. Now we have hundreds of programs in Thailand on social entrepreneurship, you know, people like Unicenter Center and uh, doing uh, accelerator program and change fusion. I think the issue for us right now is what skill do they bring, right? So there's a lot of people that apply for Jasper, right? And they said, oh, we want to do good in the world. And the first question I ask is, what can you do? And they cannot answer me. And they say, oh, I can do everything. And I said, but what are you good at? And, and a lot of the younger people, uh, you know, compared to like before, they will stay in a, a job for like five years to develop, become an expert in some area, right? The younger people today, they, they change job pretty quickly. So every year, two years, so they haven't become an expert at anything. And for an organization that needs to grow, you need some expert. And whether that's operation, finance, accounting, you know, marketing, branding, like an organization like us, I always say to my team, we need world-class people. So the people that work with me have to be the best in the country and the best in the world eventually, if they stay with us long enough. That's the goal. So I think that for younger people, the key is what skill are you going to develop so that you can help those social enterprises? Because if you have the passion and the attitude, but you don't have the skill set, then we're going to spend two years training you. And then after two years, you leave for another job. So I think that that is really the challenge for us uh, is that the attitude is there. You know, the passion is there. The skill set is not there. And the people with the skill set, they end up working at Netflix. They don't come and work with Jasper, you know. However, if you have those skill set, uh, please do apply. You know, I have a position in the United States as well. So uh, yeah, globally. <laughs> Uh, I, I see so, yeah, to I, a little bit. I think because yeah. even you have the best skill, if you don't have the mindset, people will not stay with you. So I think the mindset and the skill should go together. So if yeah. you just talk only about the, the, the skills, I think it will not work for long term. Yeah, I, I agree that for, for, for a social enterprise, our job is to provide them the career path, right? To show them this is the next five years, you know, you can grow with us uh, because then they can answer their parents. Why are you working with this social enterprise? I think that's important that go with the mindset is the, the stability and the growth plan of your company. And a lot of social enterprises don't really have that. 
So it's hard then to answer, you know, th these people about their career path. Thank you. Let's, um, we might if I go to that um, la lady, please. Are you asking? Who? Okay, yeah, please. Um, can you hear me? Okay, um, since we're short on time, I have two questions, but you could just keep the answers to under 30 seconds. My first one is, um, Tanu, you mentioned how you envision Jasmine to become like the Patagonia of food. And Patagonia has a very clear vision and purpose, which is to give back to our planet and to protect our world. So what is Jasper's vision slash purpose? So that's my first question. And my second question is to Colum, because I am a young person and I'm just stepping my foot into this world and I'm developing these skills that we are talking about right now. So as a young person who's just dipping their toes into the world of social entrepreneurship and has the ambitions to make the world a better place, how can we get involved? How can we like help Eunice catalyze impact? And how can we contribute to your vision and this greater vision that everyone in this world, in this room has to make the world a better place? What could we do? That's my question. Thank you. Okay, so our, our vision of Jazz Real Simple is about transformation. So it's transforming consumers' health, transforming farmers' life, our poverty, and transforming the planet. That's the vision. I also have a very uh, short answer as well. Get five friends, uh, sorry, four other friends together and the, who are also passionate about making a difference around a common problem that you all care about. Reach out to us. We'll help you develop an action plan to take steps to solve that problem. We'll connect you to a global network of support organizations global network of support people. You'll be able to connect to other people who are also similarly passionate about the same problems as you and working on the same thing. So that suddenly, instantly, you're empowered beyond your initial capabilities. You're, you're part of a broader movement. So if you take that small step, then we'll work with you over that period of time to help you develop that action plan from being activism into social entrepreneurship and help you then develop your, your business. So very simple step. It works best if you're not doing it on your own, if you get four friends to come with you together, because then you can all support each other and, and do this as a as a community on the way. And, and we're all here to, to help um, as well. So that's my um, a very easy ad advice uh, as well. And I think just to add one small point as well on Oh, sorry. <laughs> Actually, we have the last question waiting for as well, okay. like the lady here. You know, I would like to ask for the group consistency first. Whether we should continue, like one last question, or we should stop. Like, okay, time's up. What do you think? Okay, lady first, huh? Okay, please continue, Kala. No pressure on you. <laughs> <laughs> no. Let's hear the question. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Thank, you. Thank you. I'm from, I'm Kat from the Philippines. Uh, I think I have one, two, two questions, but you can answer one question, Um, In the Thailand landscape, what is the role or what is the involvement of the private sector with SEs? And has there been an SE who is part of a company's um, supply chain for to ensure continuity or sustainability of an SE's um, operations? So this is more of the oper operationalization of an SE's operations. Thank you. So, uh, so it's my SC Thailand hat. Um, so we we try one of the main objective of SC Thailand is to form partnership between large private organization and social uh, enterprises, right? It, it I, have to, I have to say it has been quite difficult uh, because the large organization, even the CEO of those organization, answer to the board and the shareholders. So when they take on project like we're gonna help SE, they might get fired. Right, so just because they're CEO and now they're working with Unilever, with Nestle, with a lot of these company, the known. So, uh, you know, we haven't given up. <laughs> we continue trying to align the objective, but we have to admit we haven't found a really good way yet how that will look like between you know a billion dollar organization and a tiny SE, right? Even doing business together, uh, just just. Um, so if you have any ideas, this is the kind of platform over lunchtime, you can uh, you know, give us ideas and we'll continue to push them. And hopefully we'll find a good model over the next 12 months. 
I don't know if that answers your questions. <laughs> yeah, and we have S East um that are part that are part of our supply chain. So they have continuous business with us and us with them. Yeah. All right. I think my time is up and thank you very much for all the active participation. Let's keep connect. Thank you. Thank you very much for this very important uh panel from Thailand. Um we have uh, our token of appreciation from, from a social enterprise in Thailand, who is a member of SE Thailand. Uh, so we, we give it to Pang first, and then uh, soon it will send yours too. <laughs> yes. Just to say, Friends, that Sunit is a member of uh, the Institute for Social Entrepreneurship in Asia. She's actually part of our regional council. Yeah.